and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be looking at a brand new puzzle by the Dutch master Ard van der Wetering. Um, Ard, of course, created uh, the puzzle that's behind our most successful video ever. I think it's been viewed about 8 million times. Um, that one was called A Sudoku with Only Four Given Digits. Well, Ard has obviously trumped that today. He's only given us three given digits and a remarkably scanty rule set. I mean, I saw this in our inbox this morning and I was immediately just, what on earth is going on? This must be impossible. Um, so I checked with Mark and uh, he was very happy for me to have a go at this today. Uh, none of the testers have looked at it because it literally has only just arrived. So I'm sure it will be brilliant. Um, but when I read you these rules, you will not believe that this solves. Um, now, before before we get cracking, I have a number of things to mention today. The first is I want to wish Adam uh, a very happy birthday. Adam, you're six, I believe, and your godmother, Amy, got in touch with us uh, and says that you enjoy our content, which is just fantastic. So I hope, Adam, you have a really super day today and I hope you got a Sudoku cake. Um, now, next thing, um, thank you so much if you joined us last night for the Bubba Is You stream. It was very entertaining indeed. Mark had had a, a few a few drinks before we before we kicked off, so um, it was it was entertaining to to witness our attempts to solve some of those fiendish puzzles. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna go again, I think, next Monday. Um, so next Monday night, 10 p.m. UK time. And actually a few of you have been in touch to say you are not getting notifications about when we are live streaming. Uh, now, apparently the best thing you can do is to hit the bell icon. I know you, a number of you are subscribed, obviously, um, but you actually have to hit the bell icon in YouTube as well to get um, sort of updates about future scheduled events as well. So sorry about that. What I will try and do is make sure that we do community posts as well so that you get to see when we're when we're streaming with as much notice as possible. Um, what else? Um, of course, we'll have a look over on Patreon. We've got this incredible lockout line Sudoku hunt. Everyone who solved it has been in awe of it and with good reason. It is, it is extraordinary. I think it's 15 or 16 puzzles long. Um, many of them are approachable. Some of them are quite difficult. They are all logical. And I can tell you as, as with some excitement that we're going to have an absolutely bumper collection of solution videos, many of which are going to be made by the people who have created those puzzles. So it's going to be a really, uh, a really super time when we get to October the 20th, if you've not solved it by then. Um, now, with all that said, let's get on with the puzzle it's called Dutch Whispers and that's because this orange line in the grid is not a German Whispers line today it's a Dutch Whispers line so Ard has christened a new rule for himself um, and the rules are as follows normal Sudoku rules apply uh, cells separated by a king's move in chess cannot contain the same digit let us just work out what that means so this one in the grid normally by normal Sudoku rules you could not place a one anywhere else in the column anywhere else in box seven there um, and anywhere else in row seven but a chess king in the position of this one could jump to this cell and this cell so neither of those two cells is allowed to be a one because obviously these would be a chess king's move apart so that's how king's moves work each main diagonal marked in blue cannot contain a repeated digit so hopefully you can see that there is a thin blue line um, along the positive diagonal here. Hello Maverick flying past outside my window with alarming alacrity the moment I kick my webcam into gear. Um, so yeah, no repeated digits along that diagonal, no repeated digits along this diagonal. Now here's the kicker. Adjacent digits along the orange line must differ by at least four not five if it was german whispers it would be five here it is four and that is probably going to complicate things somewhat you can see we've only got three given digits i mean this just does not seem to be enough for there to be a unique solution but do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual and now i get to play let's get cracking so my first thought is that the king's move is going to be a 
about as useful as a chocolate teapot here because I mean King's moves can be hugely powerful especially uh, in this sort this sort of position in boxes you know if you imagine if you knew what this digit was if that was an eight you could eliminate eight from all of those squares immediately just as we can with the one here eliminate ones from all of those squares but if you don't know I mean, we've only got three digits in the grid I just don't think this is enough to go on so I think I think we must have to immediately work with the orange line um, so what digits are restricted along the orange line five is restricted because if you think about it wherever five goes the digits on either side of it have to be four away from five so they'd have to be a one nine pair uh, into these two cells ah ah uh, no but well that's true that's true but i've just realized six and four are restricted in the same way if you put six on the line then you've got to have these two have to be four away they can't be greater than six because then we have to fill this digit with a 10 so you'd have to fill these two digits with one and two and the same is true with four of course but with the other way around those ha those would have to be eights and nines so actually there are a few digits on this line um let me just think are there any other digits that are going to be restricted three is less restricted i think because three could be uh yeah no three could go with seven eight or nine so it, it gains a degree of freedom um right so what on earth does this mean the answer is i've not got a scooby-doo so on this diagonal we've got to put a five somewhere the five can't go down here so oh right no i was about to say does the five have to go there but it doesn't of course oh rotten thing you rotten thing the five could go here because we know the five must be flanked by one and nine and in this position the five can get a nine from here and could have a one in the middle of the grid but what i've just realized is that the five could go in the corner as well because that way although it would have to be adjacent to a one and a nine on the orange line obviously there is only one square now on the positive diagonal so this square could be a one and that square could be a nine and that would probably work bother okay so five on this line i think can be in one of two places i'm actually going to highlight that just in case that means anything to me uh, let's put fives into the corner squares there um okay okay so one is also in one of two places on this line isn't it because the five because the five is flanked by one and nine and we've already got a nine on the diagonal the one is in one of those two places on the line um So do we then work our way down? Do we think about fours and sixes after that? So if this was five and this was one, the six on this line now, no, that's no good. The six could go in loads of places. The six could be here flanked by a two and a one. The six could be here even flanked by a two or the six could be here flanked by a two. Oh, good grief. This is complicated um ard's puzzles i i think ard is incredibly skillful as a compiler that goes without st stating but what i really love about ard's puzzles is that they aren't normally monstrously difficult there's normally like an insight you have to have and then you can do them um but so far inspiration is very far away from striking here is it this diagonal then we have to think about somehow or is it the two diagonals together if you've got 
if you've got a 5 here and a 1 here, then on this diagonal... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. If you've got 5 here and 1 here... If you've got 5 here and 1 here, on this diagonal, the 5 can't be next to the 1 anymore because there's a 5 here. So if you go 5, 1... Now neither of these squares can be a 5, which means the 5 on this diagonal would have to hide in the corner, and it can't hide in this corner because of the 5 in column 1. So that would be a 5, and this would be a 9, because it couldn't be a 1. So you go 5, 1, 5, 9. I'm just trying to see if that's going to break a knight, uh, not a knight's move, a king's move constraint, but I don't think it is. I think the five could be in one of those two places in box eight. So that, pro that could well be correct, actually. It could well be correct that there's a five here. I can't see what's wrong with that. Or is it parity? No, actually, parity is probably not... If this was a German whispers line, it would be very... Parity is, is key to German whispers because you can never have a five on the line. So, you know, once you know the parity of the line, like, for example, in this position, once you know this is a nine, you know that every alternate digit is a high digit. Um, because Because you can't put five on the line, so you know that this is a 9, this is then a low digit, so this has to bounce up again. It's just... Yeah, so it actually works, doesn't it? In fact, the parity. The parity is preserved between... Why is that cell lit? The parity goes like this. Around this triangle. Um, I just want to think about that for a second. So, this digit, I suppose this digit is not a 5 ever, is it? We know the 5 on this diagonal is in one of these two positions, so this digit is either high or low. And as we make its way around the orange line, its parity has to be preserved because it comes back and hits itself. So if this square is a 3, for example, we've got to make sure that as we make our way along the line, as we make our way round the line, we end up in a situation where jumping from this digit to this digit or, well, the parity has to preserve. That's the that's the what what I'm thinking about here. Now, if the parity preserves itself, in this version, the problem is with Dutch whispers rather than German whispers. The parity can be interfered with by the by the five, because wherever the five goes. If this is a 5, for example, the parity changes, doesn't it? Let me just think about this. Sorry, I'm just... I realise I'm being inarticulate, perhaps, but I just want to try and get my head around this. As we go round here, if this square is a 5, we know that this square is a 1 and this square is a 9. So, yes, the parity has flicked, because these two squares now are not both low or both high. They are one of each, because there is a 5 between them. So every time there is a 5 on the orange line, the parity changes, but... But we can't have it... It's got to change an even number of times. Let me just think about this. Sorry, I think, I think we're on to something here. There's something going on around this loop. This is the loop I think we have to think about. 
as the as as we go along this line we've got to preserve the parity to allow us to come back to a low digit or if if indeed this was an eight say back to a high digit and we know that whenever we hit a five the parity flicks round so we know that between here you know if we run it in this direction and back to here the parity must change an even number of times now here is an interesting thought does the parity change in row one well the answer is yes because there must be a five in row one so wherever the five is in row one the, ch the parity changes which means there must be there must be more fives there must be at least one five possibly as many as three fives in these cells because we have to have an even number of fives between this digit and itself as we travel around the loop Right, here we go. I have a breakthrough then. Right, this square is not a five. Wow, okay. I do not know if this is how you're meant to break into this puzzle, but I have now got a digit in the grid, which is this digit, because this is not a five. Why is this not a five? Well, it's because of what we did earlier. If this is a five, you have to put a one here. But that means the five on the negative diagonal now can't be in these positions we said it had to go in the corner in order for it to be next to a nine but now on this diagonal and on this diagonal you can't put another five and that means in these six squares there are no fives and if there are no fives in these six squares then what happens to the parity between this in this string of digits it will change once because there must be a five in row one and if there's a five in row one and there is somewhere i don't know where it is well i do actually it's here now but that change in parity will break the puzzle and well i think it will anyway let's just prove this to ourselves if we if this was the setup and we therefore this is definitely not a five Let's just think about what happens. You can't put a five here because obviously there's a five already on, on this diagonal. So this has to be a high digit. This has to be a low digit. This has to be a high digit. This has to be a low digit. Can't be five, remember. So this is a low digit according to how we're moving along this, this diagonal. So this is two, three or four. Now we have to put a five somewhere along here. Should we just put it here, just for the sake of clarity? We'll put the five there, although that's just, actually that's not a good place to put it. It just can't go here because this can't be a one, so we won't put it there. Um, we'll make this square. Well, this is now a high digit because it can't be a five, so this is high. Therefore, this is low. Um, so this can be this again is one, two, three, or four this time. Let's make this square the five. So this now is where the change in the parity occurs. So this was low, but this has to is it has to be high. And in fact, because it's on a five, it'll have to be a nine. This is now going to be low because it can't be five. This is going to be high. This is low. This is high. This is high. This is high. So this square has to simultaneously be high and low. It's a Schrodinger cell. It has to be both things at the same time. And that's impossible. So so we have proved we have proved what we needed to. This cannot be a five because you cannot put then an even number of fives on this orange ring at the top. That is mad. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> but it's incredibly it's incredibly clever. That is incredibly clever. Um, Ard van de Wetering, take a bow again. 
Right, so now I've proved this is not a 5. And if that's not a 5, we know that's a 5 on the positive diagonal. We know the 5 must be next to 1 and a 9 on the orange line. That can't be a 9, so that's a 1, that's a 9. I'm going to delete my hypothetical pencil marks there and there. Um, now, is this the breakthrough that we needed? That's the question. <laughs> well, actually, here's another interesting point. Let's carry on with this logic. Because now, this 5 has changed the parity as we've gone round. So we now know there is definitely another 5. That cannot be in those positions. It cannot be here. It obviously can't be there. So there must be a 5 in one of these three positions on the negative diagonal because we need the parity to flip back to preserve the parity for the central square. Um, so there's a 5 in one of these positions which means there's a 1 next to that and a 9 next to that. I think we can get rid of some of this colouring now. I think some of the colouring is probably unnecessary. Let's get rid of the colouring here, get rid of the colouring there. So we've just got to make sure we preserve the green parity colouring. Um, and do we know anything more about about anything here? 5 is in one of these positions, so 1 is in one of those positions. It can't be here, it can't be here. So one is in three different positions along the negative diagonal. What about nine actually? Maybe nine is better, or is it the same? It might only be... Oh, in fact, let's look at nine. This nine sees that square, and this nine sees that square, so this can't be a five because the five on the orange line has to be surrounded by one and nine, and you couldn't put a nine in either of those squares. So that's not five. So if five was here, you'd have, an, you'd have to put nine here and one here. If five is here, you've got to put one here. Oh, that doesn't work. If five is here, yeah, oh yes, of course, if this is five, you can't put one or nine on that square because there's already a one or a nine on the diagonal. Apologies, that was simple and I just didn't spot it. Five now by King's Move Sudoku, the first time we've got a ch chance to use that, is placed in box four because this five sees that square and this five sees that square. Five is in one of two places in box uh, two. We've got to surround this five with one and nine. We can do that. That's nine, that's one. 9 is in one of three places in box 2. 9 is in, oh no, 9 is in one of three places in box um, box 4 there. Um, <laughs> the central cell is not a 5, but sees a 1. Right. Ah, oh, I didn't realise this. Oh, good grief. Uh, hang on a sec. Have I missed a massive trick here? I don't think so, but I had not appreciated that there is a quality to the central square that I didn't realise existed. Yeah, look at this. Let's try and make this a three, just for the sake of exposition. You can't, you can't do it. Because not because of this diagonal and not because of this diagonal, but because taken together, we've now got a problem. I've got to put four digits in box five that are all four away from three. So these squares here would have to be seven, eight, nine and ten at least. And you can't put ten in a Sudoku. So you can never put three here. You can never put four here for the same reason, because these squares would all have to be selected from eights and nines. And of course, it's the same the other way around, sevens and eights, not eights, sevens and sixes. Six would require ones and twos into all of those. Sevens would require these squares to be zero, one, two, and three. 
Ah, so this square is actually 1, 2, 8 or 9 in order to allow these to have enough, enough flexibility. Well, it's not 1 and it's not 9. Oh, this is lovely. Right, and now it's not 2 because it's, it would be next to a digit that's only 1 away from it on the line. This is 8. Wow. Okay, so now these three squares are now 4 away at least from 8. So these are a 2, 3, 4 triple. This square has to be high. There's no parity. Yeah, because we've already got a 5 on the positive diagonal, the parity will, will work consistently along the rest of this diagonal. So that square is a 6 or a 7. That square is a 6 or a 7. This square is a 2, 3 or a 4. But it's next to a 6 or a 7, so it's not a 4. So this is down to being 2 or 3. 4 must be in one of these two squares by Sudoku on this diagonal. This is no longer a 4. Um, okay. Now what? <laughs> um, what an unusual Sudoku puzzle this is. It is just mesmerizing and not at all easy. So actually now we know the parity on this line as well, because again, we've got the five already locked in. So the parity must preserve itself. These digits here, the green digits in row one are all, all low digits because they're not, the nine is high. These three digits have got to be a six, seven, eight, triple. This can't be one. So this, oh no, that can be anything, I think. Uh, the 5 has appeared here, so this also has to be 2, 3, or 4. These two squares have got to be a 6, 7 pair, because we've already got 8 and 9 on the diagonal. If these are 6 and 7, that can't be 4. Um, oh, now I've got a 2, 3 pair on this diagonal. So this square in the corner is a 4. So we can remove four from those three cells. This square has to be four away from four and it can't be nine. So that's got to be eight. And now we've got a six, seven pair here. Um, yeah, does that mean something for this digit? This digit can't, oh, it can be three. Oh, I'm so, it's so counterintuitive. This can't be a one. But that can still be a six. Oh, bobbins. Um, four. Oh, here's a thought. Where does six go on the negative diagonal now? Because it can't go here because it can't be next to one and two. So this, is, this has got to be a seven. We've got to hide six in the corner. It doesn't get a song for that, but that is true. Oh, that's a seven now by Sudoku. This square here has got to be, can't be a three, so it must be a two. This is a three. Now those two squares, look, have got to be a two, four pair, which means this is a three. Let's get rid of the fours in the corners there. Um, yeah, okay, this can't be a four now because this square would not be four away from four. So this is the two, this is the four, and that's a six. Okay, you're just using the seven. Sorry. Right. Okay. So there we go. Have we now? Have we now cracked the puzzle? We've. I've actually. No, I haven't done the orange line. I've done quite a lot of the orange line, but not all of it. Let's just see if we can do a bit better. Do we know something about this line that I'm not appreciating? Wherever seven goes, no, six is the six is the restricted digit. That can't go next to three. Six cannot go next to three. So if that was a six, you've got to put three there. If that's a six, you've got to put three there. So this square here is never a three. That's, I suppose that's the simple deduction that I should have got immediately. Um, right, okay, I don't know what to do. So we're gonna to have to come up with something new, I think. 
we can. Oh, I tell you what we can do. Having maligned the King's Move idea at the start of the puzzle, I've now noticed that in box four, the King's Move is rather powerful with one. This square here can't seize that one by King's Move. So one can basically go nowhere apart from there in box four. Which places one, ah, places one on the orange line in box. So this is two, this is three. Now that fixes that that's the seven and that's the six. And now the orange line is done. And we have, we've just got a King's Move Sudoku to finish. Um, yes, okay. And now sixes, where do they go in this box? You can't put six there by King's Move. So that's a six. These three squares here are two three and seven i think two three and seven that square's not a seven that square's not a three that square i don't think is seeing anything i might be wrong but i can't see what it's seeing um okay so what next <laughs> we should look at i have not got a clue Oh, no, I have actually six in box seven. This can only go there by Sudoku. So six in box four is restricted. Six, ah, six in box eight is a little restricted. It can't go there, look. Um, oh, and that leads to a little deduction on box five. Where does six go in box five? Well, it's not here by Sudoku and it's not here anymore. Because if you put a six here, you couldn't put a six in this domino where we need to put a six in box eight. So six is in one of two places in box five. And in one of two places actually in box six because it can't go here by King's Move. But unfortunately, look at these. They don't align in a way that would be remotely useful. What do we need to finish box seven? We need twos, fours and eights. Right, well that's an eight then because that sees two and four either in its row or its column. So this eight means there's an eight in one of two positions in box four. This is now a two, four pair to complete. Ah, I can see something as a result of this two, four pair. Where does two go in box eight? It must go there, exactly there because of these two twos in columns five and six. Four is a bit less interesting, I think. Naughty four being boring. Um, what about these squares then? Twos, threes and nines. Let's just check whether we can do anything with that. We can get rid of two and three from those two. No, that looks <laughs> bobbins worthy. <laughs> Um, okay, what shall we look at next then? We shall have a look at row seven, maybe? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, what's this digit? That's lovely. Right, the thing to realize here is that in row seven, we have not seen the digits three, four and eight yet. Well, these three squares all see that one by virtue of either Sudoku or King's move. So this square can only, in fact, be a six. So that's not a six. In fact, that's not a six either. The six, oh, the sixes. Sixes are getting resolved, maybe. Sixes. How many sixes have we got? Yes, we've resolved the sixes. Now, these squares have got to be fives, sevens and nines to complete central box that can't be a five five must be vertical in column five that fixes this square is not a five so this is a five there's a five in one of these two positions not sure if that's doing anything helpful let's let's check the rest of this we need threes fours and eights to finish um uh row row thingy <laughs> row thingy row seven um so there's definitely a three in this domino um okay this column maybe one four eight and nine 
don't really like the look of that but maybe there's something going on one one might be a bit restricted actually oh goodness me yes where does one go in box two i should have spotted this didn't spot it but the king's move removes this cell so one goes there so that puts one in one of two places in box eight it gives us a 489 triple at the bottom of column six nine can't Ooh, there's a nice trick where does nine go in box nine can't go in this domino because it would rule a nine out of these two squares and we know one of these two squares is a nine in column six there's a nine up there a nine here so nine gets placed in in box nine here that's no longer a nine so this square here has just become a nine out of nowhere feels like it might be important in fact there's an eight here yes so it is important we get an, a four and an eight we get a three four pair to finish off row seven these squares are now one five and eight let's check these and see if we can do better one five or eight that's not one and the answer is um <laughs> i don't know i don't think i can do better bother um hmm four has to be in one of those two squares what else do we need in this box we need a three can we do anything with three Th well this square can't be a three because that would rule a three out of both of its possible positions in box one. So three is in one of three places. And the other digit we need is eight, which is in one of two places. So that's actually very, very annoying. Because <laughs> that doesn't seem to do anything. Um, okay. So where is the next easy deduction from? or i'll take a complicated deduction i just want a deduction of some form or another um this oh maybe this column yeah in fact look at this column we need twos fours and sevens and this is a four here so this square here is a two or a seven which gives us a two seven pair in the column it fixes this square as a four this square is a two that's not a two anymore this is three or seven so there's a two in this domino the two in one of those two places two in one of these two places i'm desperately looking for a king's move resolution i'm not seeing it ah ah but in this box two has become restricted because this combination of twos and the knight and the king's move i should say and that two there place a two in that place that gives me a two here these squares have got to be four seven and eight to complete that box which might be interesting cells like that are interesting now because they can't be four seven or eight um because of the king's move constraint so in fact what can this square be it could be oh no it can't be one one two hang on what can it be it could be three maybe it can't be four you'd eliminate a four from all those can't be five six seven eight or nine that is a mad naked single that's a three that gives me a three and a four here and now a four up there even this three is nice as well in fact this is actually looking quite interesting i've now got a nine here by sudoku which makes that a two and that a three and that a seven and that a two and that a seven and that's not nine anymore wow okay so these squares are threes fours and eights that's a naked single that's got to be an eight that's a three that's a four 
there's a four now here exactly in in this box this square is a seven or a nine c's a nine that's a seven that's a nine that's a five and that's a seven um and i noticed before that this four was seeing this square so i think that's now a four in this box uh so now can we keep that going yeah we could, well there's a seven here so yes we can that's seven that's eight that's three that's nine that's eight good grief i think we've suddenly cracked this puzzle wide open that's a one in the column that square here's a nine these two squares have got to be five and eight and we sh oh we can't do them oh bother bother well we nearly could do them it was nearly an epiphany um what about this column then we need we need a five i can see that and we need a seven uh oh there's a seven here okay so that's seven that's five that places five eight and one in box nine one goes here and we finish do we with a three no we finish with an eight and a five there and there let's just check yes wow 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 that is magical it's absolutely magical um i have no clue even now whether this is how one was meant to think about the puzzle but i think it is such a beautiful conception to construct this orange line and i really hope this is what you're meant to do is to try and work out how the parity moves around this pattern so that you end up with the same parity when you as you move around the top of the the loop and the fact you have to preserve the parity and have to have an even number of fives is just gorgeous when you realize that this this is impossible to be a five because you then rule out fives on both the positive and the negative diagonal uh, or well you don't rule them out but basically you have to you have to place the fives below row five in the grid and if you have to place them below row five you can't do you can't have an even number of fives above row five and you have yeah that's a good way of describing it you have to have an even number of fives above row five otherwise you'll break the parity and break the puzzle art oh, yet again take a bow just it's just amazing he keeps coming up with amazing weirdnesses and I love that. Um, took me a bit longer than Ard's puzzles sometimes take me, but I well, I think I think its complexity was. I mean, it's not it's not that easy, is it? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind. And thanks so much for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.